Good morning and welcome. You're watching Market for Movers. A season greetings to everybody watching uh, Bloomberg TV India today. I'm Minnie Menon and we've got a packed lineup for you as always. Uh, starting, of course, uh, Market Movers with a stock that's definitely moving, which is PDC India Financial Services, which is cracked in trade. Even as the Q2 profits for the company have come in uh, very, very well and a very good number out there. So what's gone wrong? Before we get to the uh, regular market voices in, which is the fundamental and technical check on this stock, let's quickly get you the management as well. Uh, uh, the numbers may, uh, are mainly on account of a gain from a sale of investments. However, NPAs have worsened drastically, and that's one of the reasons why the stock has done so badly. I am being joined by Ashok Haldia, MD and CEO of PTC India Financial Services. Mr. Haldia, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know. It's uh, really uh, unfair to look at the numbers the way they are because uh, you have an extraordinary, uh, you know, uh, uh, other income component which is propped up profits. But a lot of questions are being raised on the quality of your book, especially with uh, uh, the NPAs rising. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, bang on with that, Mr. Haldia. What's it looking like? Why has there been so much of stress? And is that likely to get worse? Uh, the uh, the provisions that we have made are in respect of the assets mm. and the assets that we have been talking about for quite some time. So it is, to me, it's not as a surprise. And also, maybe we could have, uh, as in the last previous quarters, we have been prudent more than what the regulatory norms would require us to do. Possibly, we could have uh, even uh, taken these provisions to the subsequent quarters. But as in the past, we thought if we have some indications on the quality of the assets, then it's better to provide for more on a, on a, on a prudence basis rather than what the regulatory norms would provide. And that precisely has been the case this quarter as well. And we need to look into the performance of this quarter and the, and, 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 and the trends in the performance on two bases, one the performance of during the quarter and also then the effect of the one-time transactions. Uh, the interest income has increased by 20 percent, the other income has increased by 17 percent, our sanctions have increased by more than 150 percent and the loan book has increased by 30 percent or year on -year, year basis. Uh, there has been dip uh, in the NIM and the spread, but that's because because some of the assets which we thought is a standard asset, we thought to make uh, make a provision for that, and because of that, there has been dip in the NIM and the spread. So I would say that uh, as you as you started uh, um, this, uh, saying that uh, the performance, the number seems to be uh, not. In the uh, in the in, in the ordinary nature, because it's a one-time transaction, it's a the regulatory and the regular performance. Uh, the investment that we have made has made us a profit of 207 crores, and at the same time, we have provided for something around 40 crores in terms of. And the fact that I've been talking about that we prudent uh, than the regulatory norms is reflected by the by the very very small gap between the gross NPA and and the net NPA. Mr. Haldi, I've got a couple of questions, so, so uh, we, we'll keep to the basics. Yeah. I, I'm going to ask you, you know, two assets uh, which uh, have been classified as NPA. One was a Kona Sima, which was a restructured a asset, which has been classified as NPA. And one is Surana Power, which is, was a standard asset, which has been, uh, you know, now classified mm -hmm. as NPA. Are you uh, saying that you've already made provisions for future NPAs, or is there a likelihood of restructured assets or standard assets in your book turning NPAs. What's the projection going forward? Because the power sector is still uh, in a tangle. We've not seen a no, complete if, clearance over there. What's the uh, if, sense going forward? No, I would say if as on date we had uh, we would have concern on any assets, uh, believe me, we would have provided for the same yesterday itself. I would say only that much. And as far as the Konasima is concerned, uh, I mean, we all know that with the availability of the gas, uh, the project uh, might be starting operation uh, beginning December if the things as they have are goes in the, um, uh, in the right manner. 
Okay, uh, you have provided for uh, RS India, which is a loan you have because the second phase of the project has been delayed for over two years. Uh, and in one case, you have uh, also filed for a criminal complaint. Now, what is the exposure to RS India? You've made a provision for it. Uh, uh, do you see this uh, turning bad? That's why you've done it. And what are the projections going forward? No, this was uh, and this is an equity investment, not a loan. Mm. And uh, so there was no RBI requirement for making provision. The about 40 megawatt of the 100 megawatt is operational. But we have made a provision of and, and we have made the provision of uh, the entire equity investment that we made of the 60 crores and more on the prudential as well as considering the overall aspects related to this project. Fair enough. Um, so you are saying that whatever you had to provide for, whatever you thought would be going bad, you've already provided for. From here on, uh, the, uh, the gross NPA is going to be maintained and reduced, or do you think uh, the pressure is going to continue over there? Uh, without talking on the future, I would say I believe so. Okay, fine. Let's look at the operations, uh, uh, Mr. Haldia. You have, uh, of course, an extraordinary yeah. income because uh, you have divested from one of the uh, investments. Uh, but I'm going to ask you, going ahead, what's the projection on this growth that you have? You've got your loan book, book which is growing at 30%. What can you share with investors who are possibly losing money on the stock today because the stock is down 13.5%? Uh, <clears throat> I would only say that uh, uh, there is a change taking place in the sector, mm -hmm. in the renewables as well as in the conventional. So the things are brightening up in the renewables. Uh, we have uh, our, uh, our, out our the pipeline, which is lined up for the disbursement, uh, renewables as well as the others, more than 5,000 crores. Uh, so I would feel uh, that would indicate uh, uh, towards the growth that might take place uh, in terms of our loan book. And uh, given the prospects in the renewables, and I, I, I believe that we should be able to maintain the growth that has been taking place in the past. But you know, the, there are concerns on the renewable segment as well. Understand that, of course, the government is making a big push over there, so you are expecting a lot of business to come over there. But uh, the yield seems to have declined according to your own uh, statement uh, of, uh, of, of numbers. Uh, and uh, this has meant lower margins and lower operating income. Is that worrying? Uh, how do you see the trend over there? No, as far as the, our renewable portfolio is concerned, uh, there is hardly any delinquencies or the, uh, in, in any of the loan account in the renewables. And as far as the, uh, the margins are concerned, while there has been a uh, reduction in the lending rates, uh, there has been a corresponding reduction in our, borrow, uh, in, in our borrowing cost. So our focus is uh, not only on increasing or the growth in the business, but also on the reducing the cost of borrowings. And uh, that uh, reduction is taking place quarter after the quarter. And uh, even in the current quarter, as the things have moved so far, uh, there has been a further reduction in the cost of borrowings. Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to ask so you, would, what uh, is we your would, book? We would, we would try to... We... Go ahead. Yeah, I would only try to say that uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have a two prone strategies, uh, uh, growth in the loan book, and at the same time, maintaining the margins. And uh, you know, we had a margins of about 4.5%, spread of 4.5%, and the margins of 6.5%. So that's a fairly good enough for us to leverage for the growth and also even to, uh, uh, to adjust the competitive pressures if we are required to. So that's a, that's a, a and, 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 and remember, uh, we have a very limited assets liability or hardly any assets liability mismatch on, on our account, on, on our books. That's a, I mean, that gives an another advantage and a strength. Should we try to increase our quality uh, portfolio even at the reduced interest rates?
Enough, uh, uh, Mr. Haldia. We leave it over there. I've got a lot of questions, so we will try and get you back uh, for a good sit-down interview to understand what uh, PDC Finance is doing. But thanks. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Uh, but uh, let's uh, get on with the show, Market Movers, uh, and look at the clutch of stocks that are making news today and are moving the market. Starting off, of course, with metals, which have taken a beating post the week China data. Hindalco, remember, comes out with numbers as well. It's been on a, a downtrend ahead of the earnings. It's uh, uh, been a stellar listing for Indigo, so we will be talking about Interglobe Aviation and what this uh, IPO has meant for uh, the other aviation counters. Dr. Reddy's is in focus again because it's taken a beating in trade after the management has indicated that the US FDA wants it to take corrective action in all of its plants. Of course, uh, we haven't got a real confirmation from the company on that, but the stock is taking it on the chin. PTC India we already discussed as PTC Finance.